What's up, guys? All right, today in the shop, we got a Billy Goat. This is a commercial power rake. And uh, that's a good tutorial for maybe a homeowner that's just buying one off of a company and uh, they're not sure how to work on them or how to use them. And, or maybe you're a new mechanic somewhere because not every company has these power rakes. Just uh, some things to go over on it because um, these machines typically sit for a long period of time and are not used every day. That's our machine right there. And this is a Honda GX160 motor. Uh, basically this, when a machine's running, you pull this in, that will activate your uh, blades underneath. And uh, what you're gonna do when you first pull this out, just go over it. Obviously you wanna uh, check your spark plug, which is right back here. And it's 5 eighths, just pull that out and put your new spark plug back in. Air filter, pretty easy, it's right here. You just wanna unscrew this right here and these caps typically sometimes are hard to pull up so you just pull up on it and there'll be either another wing nut right here or a nut right there um pull your air filter off clean that out make sure there's no mice or anything living in there put that back on the uh gas if you had the gas sitting in there for a while um <clears throat> i don't recommend doing it if you have one of these uh little pumps right here with a little siphoning hose on it you can siphon it out. Um, there's a lot of guys that'll just tilt this thing over um, and pour it out. Or if you really wanted to, you could take the tank off. You got a bolt here, a bolt here, and then you're going to have one in the back there. But the problem with that is the fuel line on these is, is only about this small coming out of the top here. And it's a little bit of a pain in the butt um, putting it back on. And getting the tank back on so I would recommend just siphoning the gas out um, another thing is the uh, sometimes these GX 160s are infamous for this so you're pulling and pulling and it's not starting um, this is your on off switch here of course make sure it's on these go faulty a lot especially if they're sitting mice get in here and they like to chew these wires and such or you have your uh, your oil sensor your sending unit here which basically this thing will not start if it's low on oil. So one of the things you can do if it's not starting, and I did another video on this if you search my channel that says GX160 not starting, but basically if you just unplug the wire here, unplug the wire going to your uh, oil sensor, that will uh, the machine will probably fire right up. Again, make sure that your uh, switch is in the on position here, and your choke would be all the way over there. You can see a sticker for the, uh, the choke and the gas here, but sometimes these are all worn off. So you, to choke this, you would go all the way to the left. And the gas, you'll see a little on with an arrow. Make sure gas is that way. Choke is this way. And you can throttle up. Um, typically, you can put it right in the middle. Or you could throttle. I usually put it three quarters of the way up. And then uh, nothing else you need to do other than just pull the machine. You don't have to have the handle depressed or nothing like that. Um, but just be careful when you do depress this. If you are indoors somewhere, those blades are going to start moving. And make sure that your uh, your deck is not down if you're indoors somewhere when that's running. Because that's dropping you lower to the ground there. This will be pretty loose like that. When you start the machine, this shaft is going to spin. And being that this belt is so loose, it's not going to spin the belt. It's just going to spin underneath of the belt here. The belt will stay still. When you pull this handle, that's what brings this back, tightens that belt, which actually will then grab onto that pulley and will make that spin. And in return, we'll start your, uh, your rakes underneath. So if this is too, uh, too tight or too loose, if you're pulling back on the handle, and it's the belt still not engaging, then you need to go and you need to adjust these so that you can have a farther pull back this way, if that makes any sense. Other things you wanna do is there's no uh, grease fittings or anything on these wheels. Uh, so I try to get some WD-40 or whatever and keep these uh, nuts lubricated here in the bearings and also spray down the back of these. 
Uh, another thing is uh, you want to lub lubricate up in here. This is what actually adjusts your deck here. So you can see it has a meter on it. If yours still has it, sometimes these get worn off. But you can see when you drop this handle down, it'll tell you how deep you're going. And if you want to go deeper or higher, basically you can just raise this back up and turn this knob either higher or lower, and that will adjust your depth. But the thing to do is just lubricate all this. Another thing is changing the oil. It's a little bit of a nightmare. Again, I resort back to that uh, little siphoning tank there. You can get that at most lawnmower shops. Uh, I think you might even have it at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, you can check your oil here. There is another one in the back. And if you're going to drain it, you could take this off, stick the hose down in there, and siphon it out. Or, if you don't have that, here is a bolt here. And what you would want to do is get yourself a piece of cardboard, lay it underneath of here. Okay, because you're going to have oil go all down the deck here. It'll be a mess. And then you're going to put a pan right here. And what you're going to have to do is tilt this whole machine forward. Prop something up under the back of it so that the oil runs out. And it will run down that cardboard into your pan. Uh, so that's how you would get the, the oil out of these. These handles here, you just, you'll have some type of clamps here. Some machines are different styles, but you basically just pull up on them and it will allow you to fold this handle forward and backward. Well, pretty much just for storage though. Um, but these lock in like that. You want to take a look at the blades underneath. So I'm going to prop this up under this machine right here. And you just want to come underneath and check and make sure that all your blades are here. There's none missing. Um, if you're missing a couple of teeth there, you're going to be missing a wide strip in the yard when you're power raking. And you don't want to do that. But if you are missing teeth or have damaged ones, um, basically you are going to have to remove this bottom pulley here on each side. And you're going to have to remove this cover here. Got a bolt there, bolt there, and there's another one back there, which will allow you to uh, bring this assembly down. And you can see how they're spaced out. There's like two spacers in between each one. And you'll have to drop that shaft down and slide the teeth back on, buy new ones. Um, another thing too is on these shafts, right in the corners here, you get a lot of like grass. You'll get wire, all kinds of stuff stuck in there, which can affect the uh, operation of the machine. So what I normally do is most of the time it's just grass and you can try to pull it all out of there, but you can see this gets real tight. So what I do is I get a torch and I just, I light it on fire. I burn it all and then get a uh, pair of needle nose and start pull that stuff out of there. Um, but I've found fishing string, weed whacker string, all kinds of stuff. Um, some metal irrigation flags wrapped around there. Um, so those are just some of the things you want to look for when you're uh, pulling out the power rake. And that's basically it. If you have any other questions, feel free to uh, leave a comment in the comments or just shoot me an email, what to do, Rob at gmail.com. And hopefully this helped. Please, guys, hit subscribe below. Give me a thumbs up. I'll see you next time.